Surprised by Joy, it's our theme this Advent season. We welcome you to the second installment of the series, uh, The Joy of Mary, uh, The Joy of the Wait, The Joy of God's Plan. As we look through Luke chapter 1 and Matthew chapter 1 as well, we see that joy comes seeping into the Christmas accounts. In every section, uh, we see that word joy or rejoice or be glad mentioned. And our sermon series takes up those themes as we uh, read them and recount uh, God's word for us. Uh, follow along with the bulletin that uh, is in your, um, in your email and uh, join me in, in the hymns, the reading, uh, and the ser sermon portion of, of that service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The opening hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, stanzas 1 through 4, Lutheran Service Book 357. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, Shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou wisdom from on high, who orderest all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribe on Sinai's height, in ancient times didst give the law, in cloud and majesty and hope, Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou branch of Jesse's tree, free them from Satan's tyranny. That trust thy mighty power to save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. A reading from Holy Scripture, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Rejoice, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born 
will be called holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll continue with our second hymn, hymn 332, Savior of the Nations, come. Savior of the nations, come. Virgin Son, make here your home. Marvel now, O heaven and earth, that the Lord chose such a birth. Not by human flesh and blood, by the Spirit of our God, was the Word of God made flesh, woman's offspring pure and fresh. Here a maid was found with child, yet remained a virgin mild. In her womb this truth was shown, God was there upon his throne. Then stepped forth the Lord of all, from his pure and kingly hall, God of God yet fully man, his heroic course began. God the Father was his source, back to God he ran his course, into hell his road went down, back then to his throne and crown. For you are the Father's Son, who in flesh the victory won, by your mighty power make whole all our ills of flesh and soul. From the manger newborn light shines in glory through the night. Darkness there no more resides. In this light faith now abides. Glory to the Father, sing. Glory to the Son, our King. Glory to the Spirit be, now and through eternity. I'll never forget the year where my little cousin, who had been anxiously counting down the days for Christmas, opened at my grandmother's house on Christmas Eve a new package of Haynes underwear as his first present of the night. Surely it wasn't the last present he would receive, but the overjoyed excitement of the wait led to something less than what he had imagined on his Christmas list. Visions of sugar plum plums had danced in his head, yet what he received under the wrapping paper were three pairs of unmentionables. There may have been no crying in the manger on Bethlehem's night, but my cousin's childlike wails could be heard throughout Grandma's meticulously decorated home. My cousin could not be consoled. The parents and grandparents were in stitches to hear this little boy scream his refrains of, It's not what I wanted. It's not what I wanted. Mary could have responded similarly when God sent Gabriel to her on that day so long ago. We wouldn't have held it against her. She was anticipating a wedding to Joseph, being a carpenter's wife in the bustling city of Nazareth, children, a family. But this, it's not what I wanted, might be what we would have cried. But she didn't. 
and we shouldn't downplay her acceptance. She didn't confer with her mom, request Gabriel to give her an extra half hour to think about it, ask some friends for a second opinion, or see if Joseph was okay with it. Zechariah, as we had heard last week, responded in unbelief, but Mary's questions were merely about the biology of the matter. She doesn't ask, how am I going to do all this? But merely, how will this take place? The Spirit will come upon you, the angel said. God will overshadow you, so that what will be born of you will be holy and perfect, without the taint of your sin. For now nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary says, Amen. But wait, we want to say to Mary, don't you know what this means for your future, for your plans, and for a normal existence in a crazy world? Don't you know what people will say about you and your son from now on and until the end of time? Their doubt about you and God. What would she tell her parents? God would handle that, Mary believed. How would the town handle it? God would take care of that too. What if they dragged her down into the street, strung her up and stoned her to death? And what then about her baby? God was the answer there as well. In some versions of this account of what we call the Annunciation, you do not find any joy in the text at all, not even a word. And truly, some might say it to be the case. No joy in this text at all. The first word of the angel to Mary, Kyra in Greek, is the word that merely is sometimes just translated as hail. It's where we get the phrase, Hail Mary. But while that word can in the scripture and sometimes is rightfully translated as hail or greetings, it is also translated in the scriptures all over and rightly so to mean to rejoice or be glad. And so the first word <clears throat> from heaven to earth, the very word when God hands over this news to Mary is rejoice. Rejoice, Mary, and be glad. But rejoice has a nuance here and in other places of Scripture as well. For this kind of rejoicing is really not about the tinsel, shiny paper, and colored bows of Christmas. It is a joy in God and in Jesus, even when the feeling of earthly joy is not experienced at all. Rejoice, Mary, the angel says. You'll be the mother of the Son of God. Rejoice, Mary. You'll soon have to leave your plans behind to go to Egypt for a few years to escape the wrath of Herod. Rejoice, Mary. You'll have to live off the kindness of wandering strangers who will show up with extra gifts. Rejoice, Mary. A sword will go through your heart as you one day see a spear go through your sons. Rejoice, Mary. You'll see the world spit on the face that you cradled. Rejoicing and the gift seem so mutually contradictory. Our, heart, our hearts mostly grate against it in this life. There's little rejoicing when we open God's packages. But God turns hearts, our hearts, to accept suffering in trials experienced. God has counted us worthy to suffer such things, and this we learn to know. We rejoice, and we learn to rejoice, that he's regarded us to put us to the test, that he's regarded us as his children. We rejoice as we consider that suffering produces good fruits in us. Joy is to know that God will, in these situations, strip us of our pride, of all of our self-reliance, and all of our blasted independence. God will lay us bare, and he will wound us, that we learn to find in him alone our good, and this we learn to believe and see as good. 
It is why Mary learns to say by the power of the word, let it be. If it is of God, it is good, even if it is of pain. What God sends will not hurt or harm, only save and deliver. It's a joy and a nuance of joy that we do see throughout the pages of Scripture. James 1, 2 wraps up joy with something else. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. 1 Peter 4, verse 12 also puts joy with strange things. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice. And Acts 5 verse 40 says, And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they let them go. So they departed, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. It was Mary that taught this kind of joy to her son. It was Joseph who, putting aside his plans for his own life, would follow this path of joy and give an example to his adopted son. It was a path they taught to Jesus that led their son to the cross, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising its shame. In the spears and the nails and in the cross, we truly see Mary and Joseph's son. Christmas is about this aspect of joy too, a joy in God's work placed in our, into our lap, a joy in nails and spears and long and uncomfortable donkey rides, a joy in dirty diapers and fleeing from the Herods of this age, a joy in cold nights far away from home, a joy given from heaven to earth to a young girl who wondered what kind of greeting this was. A joy in being a recipient of God's plan in Jesus and knowing God's work for me. God highly regards you, and he has chosen you. God's grace is received. His grace of salvation is given apart from any merit or worthiness in you. Even though you so often reject and turn from this grace given, Joy is God's forming in you, the joy that through his plan of suffering and death and resurrection of Jesus, those things will be formed in you that he will bring about. God will work his good through his good, even in the no good that I see. God forms in us the response that to be a recipient of God's work, to be God's servant, is alone enough and is something to be glad and rejoice about. God turns us from the cries and wails of, it's not what I wanted or expected or thought, to the glorious refrains, behold, the servant of the Lord. May it be to me, indeed, as you have said. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We speak the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We close with the final stanzas of hymn 357, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O come, thou key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring from on high, and cheer us by thy drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all mankind. Bid thou our sad division cease, and be thyself our King of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, well, shall come to thee, O Israel. A blessed second week of Advent. We'll look forward to seeing you next week for our look at the series Surprised by Joy. We'll look at the visitation when Mary goes to visit Elizabeth as we consider the theme, the joy of Christian community. God bless.